So I'm in the Qingling Mountains in central China, and this is one of the few remaining places where giant pandas still exist in the wild. Human encroachment and habitat loss has pushed the pandas into very remote and inaccessible places such as this. Now pandas have a very low population density, so actually finding one on these thickly forested slopes is going to be very difficult. However, I'm here for eight days and I've enlisted the help of some expert local trackers, so hopefully I'm going to be lucky. So my first morning of panda trekking is finally here. I'm excited but also extremely nervous. Despite all my planning and preparation, I know it is still not guaranteed that I'll find a panda. It will be such a disappointment to have come all this way and not catch a glimpse of one. Well that was pretty close, what a great start to the trip. Now for those pandas. So this is perfect panda habitat. As you can see it's very thick bamboo and it's impossible to see more than 10 meters through this. So what we're doing is we're walking up this riverbed and then we're stopping and listening. So the only way we're going to find a panda is if we hear one chopping away on bamboo, snapping a bamboo, or walking through the dry leaves. We found some panda droppings. It's still fairly moist, so it can't be more than a few days old. It's a good sign that we're getting closer. So here we have some very fresh panda activity. The panda has sat here perhaps only a few hours ago and munched on all these bamboo stems and here's what it's left behind, just branches with no leaves. And there's some very fresh droppings as well. So that means there must be a panda not too far from here. It will be getting dark soon, so we'll see if we can find him in the morning. So we were just walking along, and we heard some crashing around in the undergrowth. So we stopped and waited, just watched. And all of a sudden, we saw a stem of bamboo disappear down into the village. Sure enough, found a panda, although it's pretty hard to see through this dense panda. It's just over here. It was an incredible relief to have found a panda after all the time and effort I'd spent searching. I felt very fortunate to have had this panda encounter. However, on another day, I had an encounter which exceeded even my wildest dreams. Have a look at this.
cannot believe how accepting this wild panda is of my presence. I've never experienced anything like this. It is just such a privilege and an honour to be sharing this intimate moment with one of the world's most endangered and iconic creatures. He's just been patrolling the top of the ridge, marking the trees, and he's now settled down to munch on bamboo. Of course, giant pandas are actually a type of bear, and therefore their digestive tracts have actually evolved to eat meat, and not leaves. In addition to this, bamboo doesn't have much nutritional value anyway, so giant pandas have to consume up to around 20 kilograms of it a day in order to survive. I love watching how this panda is eating the bamboo. First of all, he bites off all the leaves and collects them in the side of his mouth. And then he uses his amazingly dexterous paws to roll them into a cigar shape, which is much easier for him to munch on. It is so sad to think that there's only one to two thousand of these animals left in the wild, and that many of those live in areas that are too small to be sustainable. <laughs> 